Hello, uh, hope you're well. Hello to all you beautiful people that keep coming back and watching me waffle on for 10, 20 minutes a time. Um, hope you're well, this one's for you. So yeah, in the interest of keeping videos going, this week, I'm gonna try and keep it quite quick, but it's essentially, I've just pieced together a few things of what I've had going on recently. Um, first and foremost, my trip to the Peak District. So if you follow my channel already, I mentioned I've been to the Peak District recently with a friend of mine and that I was gonna share some photos. So in the interest of you know not being a filthy stinking liar, here we are, I'm gonna share some photos with you. So yeah, I went to the Peak District with my good old friend Andy, uh, I've known him since I was like 10. About a four hour drive from where I am and I think about the same from him. Initially I had these grand ideas of you know bringing my Fuji X-T4 and a few lenses and filming like some cinematic B-roll and you know getting all those cool shots of me walking past the camera and stuff like that. But as soon as I arrived, he arrived like a couple minutes after me and um, we, you know we embraced in a man hug as you do and I instantly, instantly knew that none of that was gonna happen. I just knew that we'd spend the whole time just catching up and getting drunk, which is kind of what we did. So my poor Fuji X-T4 spent the whole time in the um, camping pod that I had. My friend Andy stayed in the tent because uh, he loves that shit. Me, I need some more home comfort. So I had a camping pod, which was essentially a bed in a shed, which was fine. And yeah, the poor X-T4 just spent the the whole time in the shed, I didn't bring it out at all. I did get some B-roll with my iPhone, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna share with you now just some photos. So day one, got there, got unpacked. Uh, we started to go for a little bit of a walk. The weather there was very up and down. And when we started to go for a walk, it just started pissing it down straight away. So we seek shelter in a local pub and just spent the rest of the day in the pub getting drunk, uh, which led to some embarrassing videos. Day one done, uh, got a little bit wet, got a lot wet to be honest with you, just yeah, play it by ear, I'm a little bit drunk right now to be honest with you, uh, so I'm going to lay down and go to sleep, Blah. get some rest. Day two woke up with a bit of a foggy head um, and I had planned out a few things, a few locations that I wanted to go and see and try and get pictures of. One being this waterfall I'd heard about, so um, it was about an hour hike to get to it off of the main road, so I'd loaded up my Toyo 45A large format camera in my big backpack and we went for a hike and it was about an hour walk and you know I soon realised after 20 minutes of walking with this camera that it is freaking heavy and uh, it's definitely not one for hiking with uh, but we finally got to the bit only to realize that it had been closed off due to flooding and um, landslides and stuff like that which was an utter utter ball lake and then had the hour walk back um, after getting zero photos so two hour hike with a very heavy camera to come back with no photos was a little bit disappointing to say the least but that's the way the cookie crumbles as they say and that's the way the cookie crumbles uh, later that day uh, so we went to a pub again got some beers got some lunch and then we went for another hike uh, up Mantor so we didn't go for a proper hike we just kind of went up to see it Mantor is like one of the highest peaks in the Peak District um, and it's just beautiful up there you know any direction you look at there's these beautiful scenic valleys and peaks and hills and it's just great we didn't go too far we just walked from the first peak to the second peak just because we'd already been on like a two hour hike that day i had the mamiya 7.2 with me and i shot um, a couple of rolls of ilford fp4 rated at 200 so it got a bit more extra contrast just because the sun was coming in out of the clouds and um yeah i was quite happy with how a lot of those photos came out and it's just so beautiful there so um we then ended up going back to the campsite and um i think we went out for some more beers and a curry that night the next day uh we woke up again foggy head foggy headed Andy had planned this uh walk uh, that he'd heard about like a nice hike it ended up being like a four hour four and a half hour hike which is probably one of the longest hikes i've ever done but it was great great fun it was beautiful we stopped halfway we bought some sandwiches and some cans of beer and stuff and had a little 
break halfway on the walk and it was just again beautiful i brought my mamiya 72 with me and i shot a couple of rolls of kodak ekta 100 and again i rated these at 200 just because it was a bit overcast which gave some extra contrast and saturation to the images but it's just you know the peak district is a really really beautiful place really scenic um, and if you haven't been i would highly highly recommend it if you live in the uk So that was essentially our last day there. Um, the next day we had to be out uh, off of campsite quite early, like 10 o'clock in the morning or something. Um, but I noticed on my weather app that we were gonna have a sunrise the next morning. Um, so we woke up at 4 a.m. We then climbed Mantor in the dark, uh, got to the top just as the sun was coming up. There was a couple of people up there already as well. And it was just, just beautiful, honestly. Like if you've never watched the sunrise before, I'd highly recommend it. Sunrises and sunsets, they're both equally beautiful but they're they're very different like a sunset is sort of calming it's got this calm to it like the day is turning into night nine time is coming you know you're winding down you're relaxing whereas a sunrise is kind of the polar opposite so it's nighttime turning into daytime the sun's coming up with it it brings light and warmth and it kind of feels more exciting more electric like watching the sun come up is just a beautiful thing that i would highly recommend to anyone that's never done it um, so I took the Toyo 45A up there and I shot a couple of sheets of Portra 160. To be honest with you, there was only like one of the photos that came out that I liked. I sent them to get developed uh, a lab that develops 4x5. And um, to be honest with you, they come out pretty crap, if I'm honest. Uh, and I definitely won't be using that lab again. Like there was something wrong with them, like the development might have gone wrong, but also the negatives they sent back were just covered in dust. Needless to say, I'm not gonna mention any names, but I won't be using that place again. And that was it. Holiday done, a few days in the Peak District, uh, had a great time catching up with a friend. Definitely gonna think about maybe doing more stuff in the future by myself, like going camping for a couple of days somewhere scenic with the large format camera, so I can make a proper nice video next time. I think that's the kind of thing you have to do by yourself, not with a friend you haven't seen in a few years. Talking about large format, I've also recently uh, made like a custom piece of artwork for a friend of mine. Basically my friend Mark recently moved back to Southend-on-Sea. Uh, he had moved to London for a while and he's now come back and he's got himself a flat in Southend. And he's been kind of doing it up, trying to make it look nice. And he approached me and said, look, I know you take a lot of black and white film photos of Southend, especially I've been working on this project called the Southend Project. So I've definitely got like a massive backlog of black and white film photos he said i want three photos all portrait orientation and i've you know figured out where i want them on my walls and i want three black and white film photos of south end can you sort me out so i look through kind of like the body of work that i've got for the south end project and you know there were some nice ones in there but i just thought there was no real proper connection between the three you know and if i'm going to give you some actual artwork for your wall i want them to to match if that makes sense so I thought, actually what I'll do is I will, I will make you some custom photos. You know, it gives me a good chance to practice with my new 4x5 large format camera, practice shooting some black and white film and just kind of getting out there and getting to grips with using it. And he was like, cool, really appreciate that. Happy to pay you, you know, you paid for the frames for the film um, and you know, the cost of my time and whatnot. Um, so my initial bit of inspiration was that he had a poster on his wall. Uh, I think it's like a Pixies band poster uh, that was like cut. So it was like in half, like there was a color at the top, a color at the bottom, and it was split completely in the middle. So I thought to myself, I want to try and make three pictures that match that picture where they're cut in the middle. So I was kind of thinking, you know, he wants them to be of South End. Thinking about South End, like if you're from South End, I see you watching this. What's the kind of one of the first things you think of? when you think of Southend on Sea. The pier, Southend Pier, it's uh, supposedly the longest pleasure pier in the world. Um, and it's very iconic, you know, it sticks right out into the Thames. 
when you're going along the seafront, no matter what point you are, you can see it wherever you are. So I thought, right, I'd quite like to, he's moved to London, he's come back to South End, let's make this iconic, let's make it about the pier. So I went to the top of the pier and I shot down. And now this was the very first photo I took um, and it's actually made it to the final three. Um, I shot a picture of the pier dead on from the top um, and just the detail, the detail is just crazy with large format, you know, you can zoom right in, you can see a couple of people on the pier, like one of them's got a shopping carrier bag and they're having a chat, like, the detail was crazy and I was happy with how that one came out, it was taken at the middle of the day, like about half twelve, it had just been raining and then the rain stopped and the sun came out, you can see like the water, the, the wet um, boards on the pier and stuff like that and I just thought, that's a really nice photo, I'm happy with that one, considering it was the first one I took, just click, come out, developed it, scanned it, looked great. So straight away after taking that, I knew that I wanted to carry on with this theme of South End Pier. I had one dead on, and I thought, right, what would be cool, he wants three photos, is if I took one from that angle and one from that angle. So I've got left, right, dead on. So I started kind of going either side and trying to find some compositions and things that look good. And the next one I got that I was happy with uh, was basically from the left hand side, taking it that way. And I took that about sort of, I think it was about eight, nine in the morning. So it was earlier in the day. And I, there's a jetty sort of down there where you can take your boats into the sea. And uh, it was kind of, you know, it gives you a nice leading lines looking at the pier. The tide was out so you can see all like the mud flaps and stuff. The detail again is just great. And then I thought to myself, right, so now I've actually got one taken in the middle of the day and one taken at the morning. So the next one has to be taken at night time. So then I've got three shots of the pier taken at three different times of the day. Um, which is what I did. So I, again, I was really struggling with the last one. The last one took me longer than any of the other two because I just couldn't find um, like a good composition that matched the other two because obviously, bear in mind, I wanted the photos cut half in half where you had half sky and half foreground and I just couldn't find something that was uncluttered. Um, and then one day, yeah, I actually met up with Mark. We went to the pub, drunk some beers, uh, caught up and I had the camera in my boot so uh, when I left him I went down to the beach and I the moon was out just over the pier and I was like this is perfect it was like nine o'clock at night so I've got one at like nine in the morning one midday one nine o'clock at night and the moon was just over the pier and I didn't even think about having the moon in the photo it was just luck you know I set up a composition took it and it came out like this and um yeah it's probably not my favorite of the three I think of the three my favorite is the one of the pier dead on um, but they all came out great and uh, I've printed them. Um, the frames are 16 by 20 uh, and I've printed them to fit that. And um, yeah, just really happy with them. He hadn't seen them at all. So basically what we agreed was that he was gonna put the hooks on the wall uh, so they were ready for the frames. I come round, I hung them up and then he came in and he saw them for the first time. And um, I'm just glad he liked them. Like, he really liked them. And uh, I think they really complement you know, his decor to his living room and they match yeah, right. the poster like I wanted to them to. And um, yeah, it's the first time I've shot any sort of like custom art. Obviously I've been a photographer for uh, quite some time now. I've been doing it professionally for five years, since 2017. When I first got into it, you know, for photography, making money photography from photography for me has always just been about taking pictures of people. I'd never really thought about in the past making money from my like, artwork from creating art and actually I really really enjoyed it and I've already got kind of a few ideas bubbling around in my head and I might try and get out and make some more custom artwork in the future to sell or just for myself you know but um, I really really enjoyed that and I really appreciate my friend like asking me to do that for him he's a great guy he's the kind of guy that supports like local people supports his friends you know he's got other paintings on his wall from friends and music and stuff and all sorts so um yeah thanks marky for uh, asking me to do that for you and then uh, lastly um i met up with another friend of mine recently sophie daly uh, to shoot some large format portraits um, just because I like to kind of keep practicing with cameras as much as I can and trying to get better at focusing and using them. So uh, I just said to her, oh, do you want to meet up for a, for a drink and shoot some portraits? And um, she was like, oh yeah, my her flat's being like renovated or something at the time it's being done up. So she was like, a few of the rooms are empty and they look a little bit cool. Um, so I was like, yep, yeah, let's go for it. So just went around the house with a large format camera. We shot a few sheets of uh, Ilford HP5. 
Some of them I had to push to 800s just because it was a bit dark in there, but that's fine. Ilford HP5 at 800 just looks like Tri-X, to be honest with you. It actually gives it a nice contrasty look. And um, yeah, we just messed around, used whatever lighting she had. She had like a skylight in a in a uh, kitchen sort of diner area, and then obviously some big sort of sliding doors with light coming through. We got out in her little garden area and took a few photos. And I was really happy with how a lot of them come out as well. So definitely really keen to kind of keep expanding my knowledge for 4x5 and keep shooting it until I get better and better and better and better. There's a project idea that I've got uh, that I want to work on next year that is going to involve taking portraits of people in their homes so it's nice to get practice of shooting portraits internally because the first time I've actually shot any portraits of people in, inside. Uh, uh, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. Um, really appreciate you guys and um, you'll see me in the next video. Bye-bye.